Most people are victims because of choice or because of expectations. People expect to be victimized. They think, they think they're not very strong or they're not very capable or they, they don't have very high aspirations. That's, if there's anything that I think people suffer from in this country, it's that not that it, they fail to achieve so much as that they fail to aspire. They don't have a sense of their own internal capacities and greatness or abilities to handle just about any situation. Well, we've talked about that before, but how can a book tell you how to do this? Well, a book can't do it for you. I'm the yeah, first one I'm to admit that. that. Absolutely. Right. Just like going to a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist cannot make your life any better. I'm convinced of that. Nor can a Valium or anything like that. It has to be something that you do internally yourself. It can provide you guidelines. It's very much like if you, your car breaks down and you got your repair manual there. You can say, well, why isn't this manual fixing my car? <laughs> <laughs> Manuals don't fix cars. They can just give you the information. You either do it to yourself or you don't. But can you the know? book give you a way to rate yourself as far as what, how, how victimized you, you really are? Yeah, I... I think so. Uh, a lot of people are very critical of uh, books and self-help books and whether or not they can really be helpful to people and so on. And I know in my own life I've been really influenced by some very significant writing of people who've lived before me. Uh, a lot of poets, uh, a lot of the great, you know, even Mark Twain, reading people. Books have really influenced my life. These kinds of books influence people's lives today. I know it from the mail that I get. And, uh, well, what's step one? Step After one, you've read the book. Step one is to change your expectations around. Like every situation you go into, all right, you got who victimizes people the most in our culture? Family members, you know, uh, your parents telling you that you ought to be the way they want you to be, your, uh, your children <coughs> telling you that they expect you to make their lunches for them, they expect you to pick after the, up after them and so on. Uh, bureaucrats, our government, uh, clerks, people like that, waiters tipping when you're getting bad service, all of these kinds of things. Yeah. You just change around your expectations. You say, I am not going to allow this person or this institution to get me. I'm not going to try to change it for the whole world. But Wayne, how to specifically, I feel sorry for mothers who are victimized every day, I mean mm. by husbands and by yeah. kids, you know. Yeah. They, have no, they have no self left. They give everything. But, and they but they've taught themselves that. They've, they've said to their husbands or their children, uh, it's okay, you can push me around. If you want to get uh, angry at me or upset at me, then I'll take that. And I believe you get treated in life the way you teach people to treat you. If you've taught people that you're going to be a dishrag or you're going to be somebody who's going to clean up all the time and you're not going to have any esteem for yourself, then naturally people are going to come along and, and just do that But to it's you. a desire to be approved, to be loved. So now you're saying no more Mr. Nice Guy. I don't think people are loved. I think it's a myth uh, that, you, that you love dishrags or that you love people. I, th I think people respect strength, not weakness. And you stand up to somebody, you say what's really on your mind, and s at first people will feign it. They'll, you know, they'll fake it. They'll say, oh my God, you've really hurt my feelings. That's a strategy. That's a technique to get you. You know, if I can get you to come over and visit me on Sunday by using guilt, you know, and saying, oh, if you don't visit me, you know, it's okay. I went through 18 hours of child labor, but that's okay. And if you don't come, then, you know, and I can use all of this stuff. And you'll come. Well, I'm going to continue to use that. But if you say, wait a second, you know, I've got a right to decide where I'm going to be on Sunday, and I'm, I can't be there this Sunday, and you're firm about that, you know what happens is after a while, people respect you more. What happens yeah, at work, though, when you go down and tell that to your boss? The very same thing I'm talking about. It, uh, you're fired. I, on the, no, no <laughs> hardly ever. And even if you are, it's generally for the better. Uh... Even on the job, people respect strength. You don't want somebody on the job who's always going to be a yes man, who's always going to, you know, if you're trying to run this show and you want to know how things are going and what the reactions are, and you got a lot of yes men around you, which is like what Nixon had around him, all, everybody just going around saying yes sir, yes, and you find that the show's ratings are going down and down and down because people aren't being willing to be honest with you. You want to have a producer or director or, or staff people who are going to say, look, this is what you're doing that's not working, this is what's effective. You don't have to be nasty or Yeah, but boorish. we expect that. But m the question I have is, if you've set a pattern in your household as a mother, or mm. even in a relationship with a man, or right. vice versa, and you've, you've been the giver and the mm. nice guy, all of a sudden, when you make that change, then don't people pull back and say, wait, you don't love me anymore? Yeah, they do, and that's a technique, too. That's a strategy to get you to go back to uh, being a slave again. And when, they, when you suddenly say to them, I love you, it has nothing to do with love, it has to do with my interest in being my own person and you're you're using guilt saying you know you don't love me isn't isn't going to work anymore how many women how many times in your life have you gone out with a man when you were dating or if you're dating now uh have somebody called you up and you know you don't want to go out with this person you know you're the nice guy everything is but you know there's nothing there and you and, can't say no yeah and you just say oh well and then there there you are three weeks later you're going out on a date and you're and this guy is coming on to you and all and you just say what am I doing here? I know. And learning how to just say, no, <laughs> you know, I don't want to go. And he says, well, you know, you're hurting my feelings and I'll probably have to put my head in the oven and, you know, any number of <laughs> You say, all right, all right, I'll go, I'll go. You know, anything 
you know, and this is the, you know, that's a victim stage. You've got to learn not to make commitments for things. Uh, and Actually, and, what you're saying, be a little selfish, huh? Selfish, not inconsiderate, yes, but selfish, definitely, in the of sense of... your own of, time. Yeah, it's your life, it's your yeah. time, it's the only shot you get at this life, and why should anybody else run it for you? If you want another amazing clip of a young Wayne Dyer, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. People do things to you, of yeah. course, it happens all the time, but what happens to you in your life is you live your life inside, yeah. and it isn't what people do to you, it's how you react to what people do to you that makes the difference.